Welcome to another episode of Knives Monroe versus the podcast. If you're hearing this right now, it's January 9th, 2020. How you guys doing? Hopefully you're doing well. I'm so excited to speak to uh, someone that I've been talking to on the internet for quite some time, Mr. Jan Kalina. Jan, how you doing, sir? Am I saying your name correct? Uh, it's it's Jan. I knew it. I knew it was Jan. <laughs> Sorry. You're from... But that's from okay. Bar. That's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk to you, Knives. Well, I'm excited to, to talk to you as well, Jan. Uh, you're from Prague, is that correct? Uh, yep. Prague, Czech Republic, not Prague, which is in Texas. There's another one, right? <laughs> I haven't in been America. There. I haven't been there, but I'm gonna take I'm gonna take your word for it. Um, it's good to to finally hear from you, sir, and, and thanks for uh, you know taking the time out of your day to have this talk with me on my fancy pants podcast. You're I want to say you're 12 hours ahead of me, something like that. Uh, yeah, it's it's something like that. That's insane. So what a time difference, and, and thank you so much for doing this. Um, you're actually stealing my sleep right now. So. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, you know what? You could, you're gonna, you'll sleep when you're dead. How about that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so what do you, what are you into right now, man? Uh, I think we spoke, hopefully I'm not, t- uh, you know, talking out of turn, but, um, you were telling me off mic that, that right now you're pursuing stand up comedy. Is that a fact? Uh, yes, it is. is yes, a, it is. How uh, big is the stand-up uh, comedy scene over there in Prague? Uh, there is surprisingly a huge scene uh, for stand-up comedy in Prague, and I didn't know until like uh, last year. Um, there's a lot of great comedians that I know, and uh, that come from all all around uh, the world. Um, you know, Scotland or. Uh, America, it's it's surprising. There are people who come from America to pursue stand-up career here in Czech Republic, which is not the most logical step for me. But hey, it's working because they do have a career here in Europe. Man, that is awesome. How long have you been exploring stand-up comedy? Oh, uh, I don't really consider myself a big stand-up comedian I, I i just do like open mics but i plan on going like a you know regular stage mm-hmm. this year i do it since last september oh wow so you're still brand new into the scene yeah i'm still a rookie how do you how do you train for this how, where do you learn i guess you learn by going to stand-ups and you see what other people are doing and um, because what you're doing at stand up is basically just several anecdotes in a row so you know uh, i tr- i try to tell a story as well make it funny but um in the end you got to condense it into like 5 10 minutes there's a limit which is nice i like you know constraints it makes you more creative when you Absolutely. have limitations. Absolutely. Do you have um, people whom you want to follow in their footsteps, you know, maybe stand-up comedian people or actors or anybody in that scene, somebody in your country that you aspire to be like? Uh, I, don't, I don't think stand-up comedy is the, is a, is the career path for me, mm. um, but it's a nice way to build confidence. I recommend it for that. Like, you know, if, you, if you're shy from public speaking, uh, the crowd at the open mics is always very nice and kind and helpful. So they're not going to heckle you and boo you. They're, they're going to try and help you. So building confidence, I think that's what stand-up comedy is good for. Um, that's smart. But I, I admire the people who do it. And I know some people who do great comedy sets. So... No, that's really smart. I, I've seen people at an open mic, and they're spilling their guts out. It's not perfect, and they're trying to explore, you know, a set, a joke, maybe a, an idea, a premise. And I watch them, and I'm like, oh, that looks easy. I could do that. And so I've, in real life, I've, I've booked myself in a, an open mic. I'm going to give stand-up comedy a try. How hard can it be? 
and I just got too nervous and I couldn't do it. I got scared. I was like, I'm, it, you know, what if, what if nobody laughs? What if it's a disaster and, and everybody's going to remember that forever? And so I chickened out. I couldn't do it. Um, it definitely takes a confident person to go up there and risk everything, risk failure, risk bombing. Have you had the opportunity to, to take the heat and bomb? Oh, uh, I have problem with speaking into a microphone. So sometimes I do a set and people don't hear me. Is that a technical issue? or is that No, that's me. Oh, that's the volume of your voice. I just like don't know how to speak into a mic so people hear me. Oh man, that's hard. That's so that's really hard. Uh, that's a that's an issue I'm working on, for example. But um, yeah, I guess you have open mics where you don't know the crowd at all, and that is more nervous. Mm -hmm. The first time I did it, it was I was very nervous as well. I just I just said my piece and just get the hell out. But uh, yeah, apparently it was funny. If they heard it, that that was the critique. They didn't hear the whole set. So. It's hard. It's hard to, with the spotlights on you. Maybe there's cameras. People have their phones, and just and to try to be funny. I mean, you're being judged. People are looking at you. They're judging you. They can tell if you don't feel confident. They can tell if you're nervous. And then you start getting into your head, and you're like, "Oh my God, they know. They know I'm nervous right now." And um, I hear bombing is like jumping off an airplane and then re pulling your parachute and it doesn't work. And then you try to pull your reserve and it doesn't work. And it's just this pre fall, like this free fall of, Oh, I'm going to die. And then you just never hit the ground until you're off stage. You know, um, it's, it takes so if much. If you feel noise. like free falling, you can sing free falling and that's a good joke. And then you're not going to bomb. Right. Right. Do you have like an opening joke, like how to just cut right into it and resolve? The no, I try to do a different set every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but, but if I'm going to do a, a bigger crowd uh, in the upcoming months, I, I'm going to like, you know, perfect one, one set that I already did to, you know, because yeah. that, that's what comedians do. They, they usually do have like, you know, two or three routines and they go with that. That's right. Yeah, that's insane, man. So, you know, I know you said this isn't necessar necessarily a career path for you, but, you know, is it? An it's a, it's more of a hobby, I think. It's a hobby. It's, it's good a nice to have hobby. Hobbies. It's good to have hobbies. I'm starting to learn that. I, I, I still don't have any hobbies, so I don't have the, the extracurricular thing to... To go out at what? night, you, I don't have any hobbies. From what I follow, you have a lot of, you know, hobbies. Maybe that have evolved into something bigger than a hobby. That's how I see it. I feel like hobbies are, are things that you do when you are not... Um, it has nothing to do with your career. And everything that I try to do, whether if I write a blog or make a podcast or make a video or whatever, anything that I try to do that maybe you've seen, I feel like it's too close to my career. I'm not, I don't know if I'm comfortable calling it a hobby, even though the podcast, like what we're doing right now, that's sort of like my way of, that's my, that's my stand-up comedy. I'm not trying to be funny, but that's my turning on the mic and trying to be productive. I guess you could look at it as a hobby. I'm not making any money off of it, but uh, maybe it is. Maybe it is a hobby, and I don't, I don't know. I just I take things way too seriously. I don't want to call it a hobby in a way. Do you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. Uh, I get it. I, I take a lot of things too seriously as well. So let me ask you a question. I ask everybody on this podcast, uh, Jan, how many birthdays have you had? How many? How many birthdays have you had? How many birthdays have I had? Oh, yeah. uh, twenty-six. Twenty-six years old, and have you figured out? Have you carved a career path? Do Do you know what it is you're you're looking towards? I mean, you want to gain confidence for a reason. Do you want to be like uh, some sort of entertainer, performer, on-screen personality, or 
or have you are you still developing that i'm curious um this is so very nice uh this i i knew this is going to be therapeutic talk <laughs> yeah. um because I, i i feel like i'm going through a bit of a crisis mm-hmm. uh in the last few months a crisis But, um, is a good time for a change Sure. Uh but I, I, I think I'm I'm figured out on what I wanna do in these terms that you asked. Um I do I do wanna tell stories and I do wanna I don't think I wanna be the person on, on screen or, or a performer. I'm 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 not that confident for it, but I know great people who are great actors and, and actresses and And um, I, I love working with them. So, you know, um, screenwriter, director would be nice. Is there, are there roads that you can take? Is there other roads I can take? A journalist, which yeah. is also, again, writing um, yeah. novels, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, well, hey, journalism is coming up. Uh, I don't know if I can... I guess I can. I, 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 if you're familiar with the website, 25 years later, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is based on that Twin Peaks line, yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be a writer for that website right now. I just this week, I got accepted. So that's that's big. Um, I used to write for a website with with a friend of mine, but then. Uh, There was a technical issue and the website got deleted and we never made any money of it. It was a hobby, basically. It was a nice hobby. So, you know, I'm going to be writing about pop culture again. I'm, I'm excited for that. Congratulations, man. That's a big deal. I've, I've never had the pleasure in writing for um, anybody professionally. So that's, that's, that's really cool. What are, what are some topics? Like, do they give you shows or music or Like what do they tell you what to write or do you have that's to come what, up with your uh, that's what's being figured out right now. So I, I should narrow down in the beginning what I would be writing about so I can pick a show or uh, movie reviews. Yeah, definitely. Um what are some some movies that you've watched recently that you could write about for uh, hours? Idea I'm gonna pitch is like a double bill with Natalie Portman. Can I guess the two Straight movies? Through? Sorry? Can I guess the two movies? Uh yeah, I guess. Natalie Portman. Go ahead. Um I'm going to I'm going to throw out a Black Swan. Is that one of them? No, nope, but, uh, but I was going to wait till you say both. Okay, so I'll, I'll I'll two more guesses. Um final answer. I'll say Closer, the Mike Nichols film and Vox Lux. Okay, Vox Lux. That's one of them. There's one of them. And Lucy in the Sky. Oh, I didn't get to see that. Is that any good? Because because Vox Lux and Lucy in the Sky are two movies which I feel people have no idea exist. Yeah. And yeah. they have been quite misunderstood. I remember Vox Lux didn't get many love and Lucy in the Sky is a very similar case. But I, I enjoyed it. It's a Lucy in the Sky is a movie about like social identity crisis and I, I, I find it entertaining let's leave it at that who directed that it's no holly the guy who did legion and uh fargo okay yeah and he's an excellent uh, uh author as well he he writes very interesting books oh that's cool wow okay Yeah, I I never saw a trailer for it. I didn't hear about it. I remember when Vox Lux came out, it looked a little pretentious to me. I know it did. It did. I know Brady Cor, and which I'm not against that, but uh, Brady Corbet, who I followed his acting career. I know. I want to say he wrote and directed that, right? I I think so. I actually forget who who did that film. That'd be a good double bill. Um, do you do they tell you how many? words to write um no i don't i don't i didn't get that info yet it's still hey it's still very fresh so it's being figured out man that is awesome well make sure to send send me some links once those are are, are out in the public because i'd love to check them out 
Well, I will. I will. Thank you, man. You mentioned Twin Peaks. If I had to write, I, I assume you're caught up on the return. Uh, I am. I I'm a I'm a I'm a huge David Lynch fan. Me too. And he he was part of my bachelor thesis as well. Oh, that is awesome. Um, so I, I wrote about doppelgangers as a literary device in mm-hmm. Victorian literature. Wow. And okay. it was compared to modern, well, plot devices. And I feel like doppelgangers are not in modern literature as much. So I put it to use to uh, movies. So it was did David you, Lynch. Did you and, see uh, uh, Richard Ayoade's The Double based off of a... Dostoevsky novel, I want to say. Yes, it was. It was David Lynch, The Double, and Enemy with Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh huh. Those, those three movies. Yeah. Were the modern opposite of what goes down in Victorian literature. I will say, is... um, you know, I my first movie was actually called Her Doppelganger, and was about doubles and. Um, the blending of identities and all this hippy dippy bullshit, but that was a that was a subject of mine I had much interest in when I was growing up. And uh, David Lynch was like the gateway drug for me to explore that visually, you know, with like Mulholland Drive and um, Lost Highway and Twin Peaks, right? So that's that's a subject I could talk about for a long time. Um, do you see yourself? following in the footsteps of an auteur, like if you ever do transition into making movies? I do have ideas where I want to be in complete control of them because they're quite personal to me. And even though they don't seem that way, because like they're like a sci-fi story or like an adventure story, but but I, I feel like they're about me. But uh, then I have ideas where, like you know, um, I don't, I can, I can sell them, and I don't, I don't care what happens to them. Yes. So yeah. it's kind of a mixture. Of course. Did you get to see Joker? I I did. Yes. What, is, uh, what were your cinema? thoughts? Cinema. Yeah. What yeah. Were you, what were your thoughts? Um. I was surprised that Todd Phillips directed this. Yeah. Because, like, who thought the guy who directed Hangover and, and Old School is going to direct a movie like this? Yeah. I, I loved it. Yeah, I too was like, I didn't know he had it in him. It was very artsy, very visual, very uh, conflicted. I. I appreciated all the ta- uh, all the hat tips to Martin Scorsese and and you know movies from the seventies and eighties like Sidney Lumet. Yes, uh, King of Comedy is one of Scorsese's best, if you ask me. I'm I'm not a fan of Scorsese to be honest, but uh, I like his religious stuff and. I've never heard that before. King of Comedy. You never heard that before. I've never heard anybody say that before. All right. Well. You got it first. <laughs> yeah, it's shocking to me, but um, I mean, I, I got how many Martin Scorsese movies have you seen? I've seen plenty. I okay, yes, I'm Do guilty think... of not watching Raging Bull. Okay, yet. okay, okay. Do you think they're too American? Like, is it too specific? No, no, I don't. I don't think so. Okay. I huh. think they. I, I don't like his focus on gangsters and its clarification of that culture. Yeah, I know, totally. But Did then you, you but then you like get a, the a, a silence. Street. Silence, yeah. And Last Temptation of Christ, and those are so deeply moving and and beautiful movies. Yeah. Uh, the Irish so, Well, that's kind of a gangster movie, I guess, but it it was more. It was more emotional. I don't think it glorified. Uh, again, did a gang, uh, did a, an assassin need a three and a half hour movie about himself? I don't know. It was based on a true story. So there's a lot of 
details that are that are there. I completely to... get that, yeah. you know, and the whole Hoffa thing. It's yeah. too complicated to explain it in, you know, 20 minutes. It's hard I, to I justify it. it's hard to justify a three and a half hour movie. I will say that, you know, most people watched it on Netflix, I think, and um I don't think it matters if it's 30 minutes or three hours. People love to just be a vegetable on their couch and watch something, whether if it's they're binging a television show or they're watching a three and a half hour movie that they're inevitably going to probably see in parts. I am guilty of, I saw that movie over the course of two days. It was heavy. I don't like doing that. I never do that, but, um, I've watched it in one day. Yeah. I tried to, but I got, I got drunk in the middle of it because I was having too good of a time. Huh. I, I got a question <laughs> for you. Have you seen uh, Lawrence of Arabia? No. Uh, there are a few movies, and I missed my chance, actually. Uh, I'm living in Austin, Texas, and it's a, you know, we have the Austin Film Society here, and we have the Alamo Draft House, and every now and then they will show movies on 70 millimeter, or they'll you know, restore it and on 35. I saw Casablanca on, on 35 millimeter, and I, there are certain movies that I want to watch on the big screen on film, and I wait for that. I haven't seen Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon because I want to watch it at the cinema. I had an opportunity about two years ago to watch Lawrence Arabia in 70 millimeter. I didn't get to do it. I think it was like a babysitter thing. I also have two kids, so it's it's hard to you got to get a babysitter for that. But um, but my friend who attended it's a four hour movie exactly. My friend who watched it. He said that it was very long, and in the middle of it, like the reels fucked up, and so it started like rewinding. No, that's and... that was intermission. Oh, I don't because know. That's don't know. that's like a fifteen minute intermission. Maybe I, I don't know. I wasn't there, but I remember him saying that it was it had technical difficulties, and I think they issued a refund, and then he had to go back. Oh, was it? Yeah, oh, okay. for him, for him. Oh, and he did mention the, the intermission as well. But but there is an intermission in that movie. It's like yeah. a part of it. Even if you watch it on like a DVD or Blu-ray disc, there's like an intermission. It's like 15, 20 minutes. It's just music. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I think even though it's an incredibly long movie, it doesn't feel like it. And it's, it, yeah. it's worth it. Yeah, I believe it. Um, when, I when I first saw... The Hateful Eight, um, that was on 70 mil, and there was an intermission, an intermission in the middle of it, and I appreciated that, and it was at a very good point in the movie where you're walked away from the first part up to the intermission, pretty satiated, happy, fulfilled with it, and then you came back and you wrapped it up. Uh, it was only like a three-hour, 15-minute experience. It didn't need an intermission, but I liked it. It added to the sort of, you know, pomp and circumstance of it all. But I'm never against it. <laughs> uh, one recommendation, watch Apocalypse Now in cinema. Yes. If you haven't already. I have not. I've They sh they show Apocalypse Now like once a year over here at the cinema. and I Really? Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. I know. I would go there every year. Dude, that's why I moved here. That's why I moved here initially as well. Um and I miss my gosh darn opportunity, and I'm going to try to make up for it. Uh, they usually show it in January, as a matter of fact. So um, that's a, I mean, every time I watch Apocalypse Now, like, I'm, it, it's my favorite movie as I'm watching it. Okay. Um, so to be able to experience it at the theater, like, I think it's going to be hallucinatory, you know? So that's, that's on my list for sure. Oh, there's many versions of that film. So which one do you prefer? Uh, well, I'd prefer not to watch the Redux, which I've seen on home video. Really? I don't, I, I, not, I, I don't dislike it. I love it. the Redux. I don't dislike it. It's just, I, I know, I don't need it. I don't need it. Huh, okay. I don't, it's, I don't think it's essential. I don't think you're missing out. Well, Coppola now made the final cut last year, which, which he also fuck? screened. You know, it's funny. And I like, felt like we don't need a final cut. I mean, like <laughs> you have theatrical version and Redux. Yeah, yeah so. no, I, I agree. I it's funny watching The Irishman. I couldn't help but think of Francis Ford Coppola and say, "What happened?" Oh, he's making a movie, like a like a big one. He always makes movies. 
I know, but they were like small and nobody watched them. This is, this I is gonna be them. bigger. I watched I watched uh Jack with Robin Williams. I liked it. But it's like what are you what's happening? I I saw Tetro. You know? It's like okay. But I haven't even, seen that. Even like Brian De Palma, who makes movies, it's like they don't it's just funny how Martin Scorsese is still that guy who's who's still pissing people off with his movies and still challenging himself <laughs> and being very compelling, even more so than Steven Spielberg, I'd say, from his generation. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'll give him that. Take, take, take Scorsese, Spielberg, Lucas, De Palma, Coppola. You know, those are the, those are the main guys of the, of the era. And I'm not surprised that the guy that made Raging Bull is still the dude who's who's crushing it today. But uh, it's 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 awfully inspiring. Hello, Jan. You still there? Yeah, I am. I, oh, I, sorry about I that. I just didn't have anything to say. No, no, no. I I know you haven't seen um, Raging Bull, but. Um, you probably wouldn't like it. It's 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 two and a half hours with despicable people. I don't think you'd like it. <laughs> it's not a. I mean, it kind of is a glorification as well of like this horrible person. So I don't know. I, I grew up with these movies and and idolized. I idolized them, so I I kind of can't do it. I can't do much about it. But um, Man, I can tell you the first time I saw Mulholland Drive like was a life-changing experience for me. Uh, I would love to see a David Lynch movie at the theater. I never have. I've never have. Oh, me neither, actually. Even like a restoration, I, I don't think I have. Uh, I think they showed Lost Highway here a couple of years ago, and I missed that. Or I would love to see Inland Empire at the theater. That's a long one as well. But I don't think I would survive it in a cinema. Yeah. Because it's a... It's a, it's a crazy movie. Yeah, I don't take drugs. I don't, but that, I don't think that's a, that's a one David Lynch movie where I actually don't know what it is about in the end. Yeah, I had a like, I feel like I do when I was watching it, but then it ended and I forgot what the hell I was thinking. And That happens uh, to me every yeah. time. Yeah, that happens to but me But like, I know what Blue Velvet is about. You know, you, you can have go in a variety of directions and have your interpretation, you know. Right. Mulholland Drive is pretty given, I think. Yeah, for sure. Lost Highway, Wild at Heart as well. But um, the Lost Highway about... is just, whoa, that's just a beautiful movie. Yeah, I had to turn on the lights at my house when I was watching it because I got scared. Right, I don't actually have that many movies where I was like scared. You know, I was I was scared at, with Cloverfield the first time I watched it. I was alone at home. I got the DVD, and uh, yeah, I was scared out of my mind. Cloverfield watching that. Cloverfield, yeah. Yeah, I saw that at the theaters, man. That was when we didn't even know what it was. The way they marketed it in America was shrouded in mystery, so you didn't know. Yeah, it was GJ doing it. his thing and yeah. being cool back then. Being cool, yeah. Yeah, I mean he's still cool depending on who you ask. I still I still like the guy. I still like the guy. Yeah, I don't have anything Did against him. Did you enjoy them. Rise of the Skywalker? Um, I don't care about Star Wars at all. So I thought it was like I thought it was fine. Just like I thought it was just as okay as the last two. Okay, and I like that opinion. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't um have any um, personal investment with the whole franchise, so I can't be a snob about it and say I didn't enjoy it. But um, yeah, I thought it was okay. Yeah, I Were you agree. able to watch it? Did you enjoy it? I I enjoyed it. Um, I think I'm a little more invested in Star Wars, but I'm not like a big huge fanboy. But um, what is yeah, it about I mean, Star it... Wars that you that you enjoy? I gotta I gotta charge my computer, so if you could just talk about Star Wars for about 60 seconds. That'd be great. <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, Star Wars. Um, at the last one had its flaws. Yes. But it's not that awful as people make it out to be. 
it's still supposed to be, you know, poppy sci-fi adventure. That's what it always was supposed to be. And I think it fulfilled its destiny. You know? It's Star Wars. Don't take it too seriously. Yeah, that's the story of my life. Trying not to take it anything too seriously. I think the person I saw it with in the cinema summed it up best. He said uh, that it wasn't bad. It can be worse because you get Attack of the Clones. So that's always going to be the worst one. All right. Sorry about that. Um, I've only seen Attack of the Clones once, and that was more than enough for me. I think I survived it twice in my life. So. Well, you're a better man than me, for sure. <laughs> it was definitely not for me at all. Um, it's the most kiddie one out of all of them, I think. Uh, Phantom Menace, though, is... Very juvenile, um, but but yeah, you know Star Wars. But it's kind of fun. Like all Star Wars are kind of juvenile. You know, you get like Evox and Porks and whatnot. It's always a little juvenile. Laser swords, yeah. Laser swords, sure, yeah. Yeah, in general, there it's usually. I mean, it's uh, I hate to be this guy because it's so it's so cynical, but um. It's really just an excuse to sell toys. As I was watching The Rise of Skywalker and I was seeing these new set pieces, these new characters, these new gizmos and gadgets, all I could think was, oh, that's a, that'll be a cool toy, and that'll be a cool toy, and that'll be a cool toy, and that'll be a great Lego set. Like that's, that's all I was thinking the whole time I was watching it. And you probably shouldn't be having those thoughts when you're watching a movie, but I can't help myself. No, you shouldn't. Because that that says a lot about the movie, right? Like, you know, it didn't really pull you in. No, and that's that's really the whole Disney endeavor uh, as a whole. Like, it's it's pretty soulless over here in the states. You know, I'm sure The Lion King is like this global phenomenon or something. But when they remade The Lion King with John Favreau, that was nothing more than a ploy to just make more money. Like, and it's, I, I still haven't watched it. It's not worth it. Watch it. If you're on a plane and you want to see it behind somebody's shoulder while it's on mute or something, but it, <laughs> it's, it's definitely not a Blu-ray to buy. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste your time. I, I know you just used that as a, as an excuse to watch it on a plane on mute. Yeah. But, uh, George Miller, yeah. uh, has a theory that if a movie works, you can watch it on mute, on an airplane, and if you still get the sense of the story and you're still entertained, then you made a good movie. So that's how he watched Mad Max Fury Road, and he was like, this actually works. I'm satisfied with myself. Really? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you just used it as an insult, but... No, I, 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 well, I, didn't mean, I didn't mean to use it as an insult. I guess I did, but... um. No, I meant it just kind of matter-of-factly. Like, I've seen Avengers Endgame countless times be at the air, on the airplane, you know, behind somebody's shoulder, behind two people or something. And I'm one of the people disappointed in Endgame. Well, count me in, because I didn't uh, care too okay. much for it. I watched it twice in a cinema, because, this, because the first time I didn't believe what I just watched, and the second time I was just made... I was just there to make sure I... Was at the right place or something, and I was. For for such a long movie, it still still all seems rushed. The whole plot is not very cohesive. It's all just very it's, I mumbo feel, jumbo. I feel like Avengers Endgame gets a free pass almost from criticism yes. and all these other writing tropes that would otherwise in another movie or in, in another franchise or something that's not a conclusion, people would be very, very uh, cynical towards and say, hey, you can't just throw time travel in there and say, yeah, I figured it out in my first try, you know, um, because... How plot. the heck did you figure out time travel, you know? I knew. Oh, and also, I was you against. Cannot, you cannot. You cannot shit on Back to the Future. 
<laughs> in a movie and, and do it twice and have Paul Rudd say something about Back to the Future and right. be it's negative. That was that was the moment I almost walked out of the cinema because Back to the Future is my all time favorite movie. Mm. The first one, the so, first Back to the Future. The first one, but I loved all all of the all three of them. Wow, yeah, no, that's almost a perfect movie, I'll say. I saw it really late. Like I saw it just ten years ago. I was already like in my twenties. Uh, but it was a movie that oh, okay. a lot of people grew up with, you know. And I, was I have a similar story. I saw it late as well, but uh, well, not in my twenties. Still a teenager. Yeah, what I is... always like uh, we were on like a family trip all the time. They played it on on TV, and I was like, "Yeah, but I want to catch that movie." And then like we didn't catch it. I always saw like the ending when he's disappearing. Right. Okay. Cool. What? I never I never saw a second of the second one. And then I always ended up watching just the third one. So I, I know the third one by heart, basically. Right. And I didn't know what the first two movies are until I got like a box set of Back to the Future. Interesting. What is it about Back to the Future that, that endures? Like, why, why does it connect with so many people, do you think? Uh, as you said, I think it's a perfect movie. They should teach it in film schools and film courses because it's a very really tight script. But uh, apart from that, it's it's just all very fun. There's nothing like you know inherently crass. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's no there's nobody just like saying fuck every minute just to be funny. <laughs> right. And That's uh, true. the it's movie wholesome. is about friendship as well. Right. And yeah, and it has a nice message, right? You know. You can you can do whatever you want if you put your mind to it. Yeah. Also, the visual. Does Avengers Endgame have that? No. It doesn't. I don't know what Endgame is thematically about. It's not. It's just the end of a soap opera, and that has its place, and people should enjoy that. I'm not trying to denigrate that, but um, there's something about the visual language of Back to the Future. Like, I think on mute it works. A movie like what you said about George Miller, like. Should work. Oh right, yeah. Should Back work. To the future just works the pictures. I mean. The pictures alone should tell the story. Edgar Wright does that very well as, uh, as well, where the the pictures. It's like you're watching. It's like you're reading um, a children's book. They're just so gloriously photographed and composed. Every picture is a painting. That's exactly right, and I think Back to the Future was a seminal film for a lot of people. It kind of I think excited people to want to even pursue filmmaking because it looked like man that looked like it was a fun thing to make as you're watching it. Yeah, you you can see that like the people are having fun. Yeah, that's totally there. Um, I think and, that and has you are having it. fun with them. I I don't like movies where you're watching someone have fun, but like you don't as an audience member. Yeah, that's probably why you don't like Martin Scorsese, which is fine. I'm not I'm not judging you. That's cool. Uh, but but uh, it's difficult. Which actually brings me with Back to the Future. Nobody talks about Robert Zemeckis. No, he, Robert Zemeckis gets too much. He gets too much credit. Does he? Of course. Over here in the I States. never hear people talk about Zemeckis, and I can, I can go on the street oh. and ask them if they know Bob, and they're not gonna know Bob. I mean, ask him if they've all watched, the movies he made. Ask him if they've watched Forrest Gump. Of course they did, I but mean, they're not going to know Zemeckis made it. But you know, they know oh, Scorsese. I don't know. I mean, he's had some. He's had some flops. The past three, four movies, I think. Sure. I, yeah. I mean, I still enjoy them, but I think I'm in the minority. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying he is, you know, flawless, but uh, he's one of the greatest filmmakers we have. I mean, he did make. A, he's made a couple classics for sure. You can't take that away from him. That becomes her is in my opinion the best movie Meryl Streep made. I forgot Robert Zemeckis directed that. That's a good point. I haven't seen it in years, as a matter of fact. Here in in, in Czech Republic, it's all the time on TV. Like I can turn on a channel and uh, either on on. 
on TV. It's going to be some World War II documentary. So you're going to see Adolf, where you change the channel, and there's going to be Meryl Streep losing her head. Hmm. <laughs> and Bruce Willis being cartoony. Uh, I love Bruce Willis in that movie. Speaking of Bruce Willis, a guy that nobody talks about is um, who's the director <laughs> that did um, The Fifth Element? Uh, Luke Besson. Luke Besson. What about him? No one gives him any I'm credit. I'm never sure how to pronounce Besson's name. Yeah. I, I gotta ask my French friend. Uh, because, right? Because he's French. So you right. leave out the last letter. So I'm it's sure Besson. It's Besson. Or it's Besson? Besson? I don't know. I don't know. Luke Besson. I believe it be. <laughs> I mean, gosh, this guy made a movie. What was it? Valkyrie? No, Valeria. Valerian. Valerian and the City of Thousand Planets. Yes. I thought that was going to be the new Avatar. Really? Huh. But okay. it wasn't. I put money on it, too, and it wasn't. I mean, I enjoyed that movie. It was, it was fun. I remember more about uh, Valerian than I do The Rise of Skywalker. And I saw Valerian three years ago. Okay. Well, and I saw Rise of Skywalker a, three weeks ago. Lot. It's just too much happens. Like, I, I'm, I'm becoming an old man. Like, I, I walked out of Rise of Skywalker, and I'm like, I there was an epilepsy warning before the movie, so I don't know if that had something to do with it, but I felt like it was moving too fast. It was too flashy. I didn't know what was going on. You can't it was say moving too fast. Yes, that's that was the deal people said in reviews and all and I don't know. Yeah. It was and it wasn't. It could have spent time on different things, you know, like the whole palpatine thing. I don't How get why things come back? need to end. We're putting way much. We're we're putting way too much emphasis on closure, I think. Yeah. Why does everything? I actually want to see those characters again. I want to see Ray. I want to see Daisy Ridley with a lightsaber again. Right. I enjoyed her so much. I have nothing bad to say about her. I feel like she was one of the few things that was protected in that in the new trilogy for sure. Of course, Adam Driver was you know a highlight all the time as well. Right. Totally. I don't think we're going to see him again in a Star Wars movie ever. Never say never. I mean, never say never. There's always... You can money? Always, there's always money. <laughs> there's always no, money. No, I don't, I don't actually think he's after money because I, I don't know if you know his story, but he's like a war veteran. Of course. Right? He was, a, he was in the Marines, driver. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So he, I don't know if he saw combat. I don't know if he was a war vet. I don't. Maybe he was, but um, I know that he was a marine. He's definitely a vet for sure. Uh, I think he was at least like a. It sounds like you know some tour you know after him. I wouldn't yeah. doubt it. And yeah, he's supremely talented. But you know, if somebody marriage offers story, you, marriage story is great. If you haven't watched that, I watched it. I liked it more than my spouse, more than my wife did. But um, if somebody offers <laughs> is you, is that a 50, good movie to watch on a date night? Well, we we're the, <laughs> we're an eyes wide shut kind of house around here, so that's it's totally fine, you know. Uh, Ooh, yeah. okay, yeah, she's she's super cool. So it it wasn't that wasn't the problem for a date night. It I just don't think she liked Scarlett Johansson's character at all. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, she didn't like the movie as much as I did, but I'm far more sensitive. Like I was crying in the first two minutes. I'm, I cry for everything. Okay. In yeah. the first two minutes? What was there? No, I, I cry a lot, but yeah. like at the first two minutes? Oh, yeah. I cry I cry for everything. I'm a big crybaby. Everything makes me okay. cry. Okay. No, that's a good thing. Own I it. cried. Uh, uh, the only time I've ever cried in a Star Wars movie was in The Last Jedi when Yoda m makes a cameo and he tells Luke, cheer up, buddy. It's okay. You know, failure is just, you know, it's just the greatest teacher. And yeah, that yeah. whole sequence was just like, I needed to hear that personally. I needed to hear oh, Yoda. No. I rewatched you know? Last Jedi the other day before I watched Rise of the Skywalker. And I wasn't a big fan of it. I mean, I enjoyed it. But, you know, I wasn't blown away. And I rewatched it and I loved it so much more. Yeah. Especially because of Yoda scene. Yes. And that scene with uh, 
with Rose where she tries to like save Finn and she dodges the yeah. little jet they fly in and, and yeah. they say that line um, that you're not gonna win if you're gonna fight what they hate but they're if they gonna save win what they love saving what they love yeah and then first Rise- time I watched it in cinema I was like this is so cliche sure. you know fuck all of you but <laughs> This time it it really touched me. I was like, "Oh Jesus Christ!" And then so, Rise yeah. of Skywalker just took a shit all over that and was like, "Well, it turns out, you know, we can bring out the whole galaxy. They they can help when it's convenient." Yes, when it's convenient. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. For sure. What you gonna do? Yeah, nothing, nothing. I I don't care. I just don't. It's gonna sell T-shirts and bed sheets. I and actually video feel games. they should have just kept it like a battle between uh, uh, Palpatine and Ray, and leave everybody else just like I don't know, doing nothing. You know, it's not their fight. It's not their fight. I agree. So, so you know, just I, I actually never liked those uh, X-wing fighters. There's those scum rebel fighters. You know, sure. So it seems like cheap sequences. And, yeah, it was a it was a movie that was thrilling, you know. That was trying to have its cake and eat it too. Just to you know, rivers with the lightsaber. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. But you know, we could we could nitpick Rise of Skywalker all day. I think people are going to be doing it forever, so they don't need me to add to that for sure. I, no, I I enjoyed that movie. That's what I always say. I think it's a good movie. Well, there you go. I don't agree, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I thought it was just as fine as the all. You know, it's fuck good. It's a Star Wars movie. You know, like they're they're pretty much all that way in a way. Um, they're all competently made, and they have lightsabers. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know why we have to. What's so strange is like this universe is so ubiquitous, so vast, so grand. I don't know why they got to be telling stories about the Force. Why they got to be telling stories with lightsabers? Like, you just give me, give me Pulp Fiction in space. I'm cool with that. Right. Uh, he was supposed to do Star Trek in space. Uh, well, Tarantino Star Trek, right? I I never. I well, he pulled out of it, but I knew that was never going to happen, especially because yeah, it ch- he has changed. Ten- uh, yeah, yeah, like that's not going to happen. No. So it was a fun thing to think about. I remember when he said it, but uh, I think he's he's got one more movie left in him and he's going to walk away and it's definitely not going to be a Star Trek movie. No. Everybody knew that. So. Yeah, I didn't buy it for a second, but um, dude, I got to say, um, I love Quentin Tarantino. I'm I'm a filmmaker because of that guy, just like a lot of other people. But I, I, was, I, I know I know you are. So yeah. that's why I'm not I, I can't say this. So Well I I'm not a I'm not a Tarantino fan. I know, I know okay, really so, at, okay. at all. But I I do appreciate some of his films a lot. Yeah. And Glorious Bastards is I think his best one. I, I He's can't not gonna argue top that. that. I can't argue that. I did not like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood at all. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I I think that's an absolutely awful movie. It has no plot, no structure. It's as, essentially a Russian film made on a Hollywood budget. <laughs> I like that take. Um, I just, yeah, I agree with the no plot thing, no structure. I agree with that. That's usually not a deal breaker for me. I'm, I'm fine with that. Why wasn't the, 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 the sequence when Pitt is at the ranch and he insults them? Yeah. Connected to the reason why they go to the, you know, I know houses in the hills and and they want to fuck them up. They I just know. go there because Charlie sent them. Yeah. Why? Why, why wasn't it connected? So the two hours of movie before that had no connection to anything afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who allowed this? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. People, I mean, Quentin can do whatever he wants. They'll let him do whatever he I wants. I know, and that's wrong. Sometimes you need, like, the studio guidance to tell you, hey, you know, this is all nice. Let's give me the script, and I rip out, like, 20 pages out of it. Yeah, that, it's strange. That's fucking show business. He, he usually it, breaks. It happens. He, he successfully breaks a lot of rules when it comes to 
the norms of cinema, you know, like Pulp Fiction's out of order and, you know, it was really... And that's com- fucking great. And it is and that's great. fucking great. And that was new at the time. Exactly. And I agree with that. For some reason, this one didn't make sense. And there's a, there's a four and a half hour cut coming. And I, man, that, I don't know if that's going to make the movie better. How? And I love this guy. I love Tarantino. He's one of my heroes, you know? This was, I think, if out of the nine movies that are written and directed by him, this is at the bottom for me. One of them's got to be at the bottom, and it's and it's this one, which is weird because it has everything going for it. It has DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. It has Al Pacino in it. Margot Robbie. She says absolutely nothing in that movie. I know. I know. I'm okay with, I like... Felt, I felt sorry for her. I'm okay with all the Margot Robbie stuff. Like, that's the about the only stuff I like. Timothy Oliphant. Oh, the list, it. The list Absolutely on doing on. dog shit. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't know why... it. I And I saw it the second time, and I liked it less, and I was a little bored, which I hate saying, because... Gosh, I don't know. Like, I would never tell Quentin that to his face. I have too much love and reverence for him. But this one was a huh, I, I think even to my heroes, I would, I would, you know, shake their hand and then I would punch them in their face for <laughs> some mistakes they made, you know. Oh. Not Zemeckis, though. I don't think he made any grave mistakes. But, like, Spielberg, you know, I would be like, Jesus, man, you're so great. You know, I would kiss his feet a couple times and then I would punch him in the face for, you know, uh, The Post, BFG. I know those are horrible movies he made oh, in the past. What about, um, what was that one? Like the VR one? The what? It was like a VR movie and it was based off of a book. Ready Player One? Ready Player One. Okay, I... Sh- I- I read that book. The book is great. And ever since I read that book, I was like, I hope they make this into a movie. And Edgar Wright directs it. Ooh. No, they got Steven Spielberg. I think he did a good job. I can I can say he didn't. I, I think it's a well-made film. But like, I felt it should have been directed by someone young who is like influenced by, you know, all that 80s pop culture and Nostalgia? Not someone who actually made that pop culture. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing. Maybe it was an experiment um, for something else. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, I mean, get Edgar Wright for everything, you know? But, yeah. hey, that's just my opinion. I know. I know. I've been saying that for a minute, for sure. Um, Ooh, uh, how do you feel about West Side Story? Oh, is that still happening? The... Exactly. Spielberg was always talking about how much he loves musicals. And I was like, yes, man, go ahead and make a musical. That musical scene in Temple of Doom is great. You got it. <laughs> and he always talked how much he loves West Side Story. And I was like, cool, but that movie sucks. It has no place in modern time, and I couldn't ever finish watching it. So please don't you remake it. Just go and ask someone to write a new musical for you. It's not that hard. No. He goes and remakes Red Side Story. Mm. So, I'm not I'm not excited for that. Oh, yeah. I think he's just bored. I mean, he's made some serious movies. He did. Of course, he did. And no one's gonna take it away again. He did Jurassic Park and Schindler's List in the same year. Yes. That's there's an interesting documentary about Spielberg if you watched it. No, I don't think I... But he talks about this. I don't think I, I've seen it, no. It's just called Spielberg. It was HBO oh, movie. Oh, I did. No, no, I, no I, 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 never, I never did. Um, if it's still on HBO, I'll watch it tonight, as a matter of fact. There's a great... There's a better documentary about a filmmaker if you want. There's the Palma documentary... Okay. And I... it's by uh, Jake Paltrow and Noah Baumbach. It's directed by really? them. Really? I'll check it out. I've seen Milius. 
That's a great documentary. I haven't watched that. I and haven't there's, watched that. And um, there's also the Robert Altman, Altman one, which is pretty good. It's good to learn about him. Uh, there's several Stanley Kubrick ones as well. But I'll check out that Spielberg one because he's, I mean, normally people don't have a bad thing to say about him. So I, I'm curious to see if it's Ooh, just this big I puppies. do if you want, but uh, yeah, go ahead. just me. Please. <laughs> well, the documentary actually shows it. Um, uh, that he scares children. Oh, that's not cool. That like and and then and I use it as a as a joke, and it's a bad joke. But like he scares them into into drug addiction, right? So you get Drew Barrymore being an ET, and you know he's scaring the shit out of her, and then she's in drugs. That's and lame. You get other kids like that, and like that story with Poltergeist. I know everybody says that he didn't direct it. But then we have a lot of people, even from the set, saying, hey, Spielberg actually directed Poltergeist. Mm. And there's that scene with the bat and the branches. I don't remember the movie exactly right now. They did that scene. The kid almost died with fear. And he told mm. Spielberg, because he was a producer, at least on the set, that's what he got the credit for. He said, we're never going to do that scene again. Okay, I promise. They did that scene again. You know, he broke his promise to kid. Wow. Uh, I never knew that. And I can't believe this is the same guy who, who made E.T., which is such a, a nice movie. It's a movie where he's trying to solve his daddy issues. Yeah. And he, he never was supposed to have daddy issues. It was... It's all in the documentary. Uh, he is... His mom found someone else, and the dad was like, hey, I'm going to be the bigger man here. I'm going to walk away. And he thought his father abandoned him when he was a child, but that was not the case. So that's why Indiana Jones has daddy issues. Yeah. That's why almost every character in his movie has a daddy issues until, I think, until War of the Words. That's when he, I think, made up with his dad now dads are okay. Ooh. Seriously, I'm not. No, I I totally believe you. I'm not kidding. And I appreciate this take. I appreciate this entire angle because, you know, Steven Spielberg, at least from my perspective, has always looked like a goody two shoes or something. You know, so it's good to see that there's this fucked up side. But he of him. uses the movies as his therapy, and yeah. I feel like maybe he should have talked to someone about something at least. Mm-hmm. I'm glad Indiana Jones has daddy issues in The Last Crusade. It's a lot of fun. But, yeah. You know. Yeah. Jen, uh, I want to be respectful of your time and, and of your sleep, and I just want to give you a big thank you for, for talking to me, man. Uh, I feel like I got a buddy now that I can talk about movies with. So next Cool. Th- uh, me as well. Awesome. And next time there's – I don't know what I'm looking forward to this year, um, but if there's something that you're looking forward to, just – Message me and say, "Hey, man, I'd love to talk about this movie, and I'd I'd love to schedule that, and we can do some deep dives." And, and I have a whole my my must see list on IMDb, so I just sent you that. Oh, share that with me, cool. And uh, and I'd love to, if it helps you write, you know, I'd love to be able to talk these things and work these things out, and maybe you can get to some place that you didn't really find before, and that'd be awesome. I'd love that selfishly for myself as well. <laughs> I don't think that's selfish, but uh, okay. Well, thanks, buddy. Uh, Jan, can thanks. I can I ask you one 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 thing? No. Do you rec- do you recommend <laughs> Knives Out? Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Just a simple yes no. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I saw it. It was lovely. It was delightful. It was fun. If you could watch it at the cinema, watch it at the cinema because it's it's very fun. It's That's very what fun. I'm gonna do next week. Awesome, awesome. So yeah. we can discuss it. I'm in. We'll 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 make it happen. I know there's a time difference, but we'll make it happen, and maybe we can do this regularly. I, I'd be really excited about that. Cool, cool. I, I I look forward to it. Jan, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. If you want, um, take this opportunity to to tell people where they can find you on the internet. Um, of course. Well, you are gonna somehow upload this, so I'm gonna let them know. Okay, cool. If you you know, uh, feel free to shout out. Like, if you're on Twitter, if you're on, you mentioned your IMDb wish. You know, I'm sorry, a view list, watch list. Um, 
but I'll go ahead and link some of your social media in the in the podcast notes below so people can can find you and follow you and support your cause. But uh, thanks so much for coming on the show, man, and we're going to do it again. I, I, I thank you so much. It's my pleasure. I had a good time. We're going to do it again. Take care, brother. Take care. See ya.